like nobody wants to pay extra for their product so you really want to make sure that you understand the shipping process and that you are offering the most convenience to your customers so this video is for you if you are new to e-commerce whether you want to be selling on Etsy start your own Shopify or have your own e-commerce website hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Samantha in this video I'm going to be sharing with you five easy steps on how to ship your packages for your e-commerce site Shopify or Etsy shops I'm going to be talking about how you can actually calculate your shipping costs and also how you should be packaging your products in a way that is attractive protective and most cost efficient so by the end of this video, you should be ready to start your e-commerce store. And if you're specifically looking to opening an Etsy shop, be sure to use the link that I will provide for you in the description box below. It will give you access to 40 free listings, saving you about eight US dollars to get your business started on Etsy. And uh, since I started making Etsy tutorials, the most frequently asked question that I get in my inbox and in the comment section is about shipping. So I've realized that a lot of people are actually holding themselves back from opening their online businesses and actually being an e-commerce entrepreneur because of the fear of this whole shipping process. It seems that it's still a mystery to some and some people are actually baffled and don't even know how they will start and how they will be fulfilling their orders. Anyway, I'm gonna be sharing with you how you can actually determine your shipping costs and and uh, choose which shipping agents to be using to fulfill your orders and get your business taking off to you being a successful e-commerce entrepreneur. Without wasting any more time, let's get to calculating your shipping costs. First things first, you're going to need to know your product. At least have an idea of what you want to be selling on Etsy, Shopify, or you're going to be building a whole new website for your business, but at least have an idea what you're going to sell. So maybe you are this person who's been a painting for a long time, or you are making handmade jewelry, accessories, clothes, etc. You name it. And you know your product, you know exactly what you want to be selling because you have this special gift, talent and ability that you've been sitting on and now you've finally decided that you want to be monetizing your talent. So you know your product. So step one is weigh your product. You definitely have to invest in a digital scale. These will range from as little as $10, $50, $100, $200, etc. But you can actually usually even get away with a kitchen scale, to be honest. If you are selling like smaller items, um, jewelry, some clothing items which are not too heavy. So just invest in a digital scale so that you can actually weigh your product. And once you've got the weight of your product, you're going to be able to actually calculate the more precise rate of shipping so that you're not overcharging or undercharging on your shipping. If it's something more fragile like um, pottery, then of course, even for that, that's going to carry a different type of packaging so that your product arrives to the consumer, to the buyer in the safest and nicest possible way. And then step number two, you are going to want to measure the dimensions of your packaging. I got a bag not too long ago and it came in this box. So maybe you want to be packaging your stuff like this. This will actually end up kind of adding to your cost as well because the shipping agent may not only use the weight of the product but the dimensions of your box which is going to be your your length your width and the depth of it so most commercial couriers or freight companies use a volumetric system to calculate how much they will charge you for your shipping so it's not just going to be based on how much your product weighs but also the dimensions the size of the box in which your product is packaged so you want to be able to have like an idea of what the actual final packaged product looks like so with this information at hand you can now go on to step number three which is to contact your various freight couriers or shipping agent really? so a lot of you who asked me about this video and how to do your shipping are actually people who want to be shipping internationally so what you want to do is go to whether you're going to ups your postal service 
DHL FedEx is go with your either your product so that they can weigh it if you don't have your own scale or you can just ring them up send them an email and ask them for this shipping schedule some people are happy to do that I have one here I'll just show you this is what it looks like it's got all the shipping rates from different countries literally from A to Z of everywhere that they ship to how much you're going to be paying for 500 grams a kilo two kilograms etc this is going to help you kind of to determine how much you're going to be paying for shipping to different regions and um, say for example you want to be shipping internationally go to different courier companies and postal services get their charges and compare them between to determine which one you actually want to be using oh. step number four is to calculate your averages and in here you want to be able to calculate the average in case you want to have like a single um, shipping fee for a particular region or within your country or like your domestic shipping rate is one fixed price and say to Europe I'm gonna charge maybe $30 to ship the product but in some instances you want to ship globally but you're not actually exactly sure how much the shipping will be to a certain part of the world that you've never shipped to before so you want to have an estimate and in those times that you want to have like a general estimate of how much you're going to charge for shipping you can then take an average and say okay fine this is going to be my shipping rate so the point is to choose different regions or different cities within your country that are so far apart say you're in the US you take maybe something like Houston Texas New York, Washington, and LA. So if I want to ship to Europe from the Middle East or from Africa, maybe say Germany, Italy, Spain, and the UK, kind of covering all the regions, and then calculate the average for these. In these cases though, this is just an average. Your shipping cost may not be exact, but it will be an estimate. So in some cases you may lose a couple of dollars or you may gain a couple of dollars through your shipping cost. But this is just if you wanna have like kind of like a fixed shipping cost to different uh, places, in um, in the world but as you kind of get on with your business you will be definitely leveling off and finding what works the best for so you deciding which shipping agents you're going to be using will be step number five and uh, you really want to make sure that you understand the shipping process and that you are offering the most convenience to your customers you're going to be comparing the rates that you get you're going to be comparing the price like the most affordable to the most expensive but also don't just leave it there you also need to consider the time of delivery that they're going to be promising and guaranteeing to you so ask them how long will it take for this product to reach this particular destination so that when you are promising your customer that you're going to deliver within seven days ten days it's accurate and it's actually based on what your shipping agent is able to meet so the secret and trick to e-commerce is really finding a match between the cost efficiency and time efficiency of your shipping agent. A lot of people do not want to wait so long for their products and you're going to see that once you get started on your e-commerce store this is going to be like the number one source of your ratings is the product gets to your customer really quickly they love it and they're going to give you great reviews for it they're going to be like oh my gosh the product got to me so quickly and uh, much more than I expected and also you want to know do they deliver to your customers doorstep or will they leave it at the post office in which case the customer may have the added expense or inconvenience of actually going to a post office and possibly paying extra postal handling fees to receive the product that they have purchased from your shop and you don't actually have to choose one you can choose two or three shipping agents that you know are going to be able to get the product to your customer in the safest way and you want to think of yourself put yourself in the customer's shoes when you are considering or choosing which courier company or handling service to use to deliver your product yes. and uh, if you want to know how you can actually kind of like not really manipulate the numbers but play with the numbers in a way that allows you to offer lower shipping rates to your customers than actually what the shipping rate is 
or to offer free shipping, then be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because in the few weeks, coming few weeks, I'm going to be making videos on how you can offer free shipping to your customers while not, while, you know, kind of like they're paying for the shipping, but they're not really aware how much they're actually paying for the shipping. Um, yeah, anyway, it's going to be exciting. So I hope you will uh, enjoy that one. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And I would say the three things that you should put in mind or consider the most when you are choosing which shipping agent to use are number one, the time they take to deliver the product. Number two, the cost of the shipping. You want to choose someone who's quite affordable, both for you and your customer, because ultimately this is going to be an expense either to your business or to your customer. And this may hinder the, the rate of growth that you're going to have or the number of people that are buying from you because people don't want to pay beyond a certain level um, for shipping unless they really value your product or unless your product is really unique and they can't get it from anybody else. A lot of people don't want to pay so much for shipping, which is why Etsy promotes free shipping. And number three is the aspect of home delivery ask your agent are they actually going to deliver at home or it's going to be like delivered to a post office in which case you know sometimes um, you're just concerned about getting your product out there but you also want to think about the customer experience with you and with your shop especially if you're building and developing a brand which is really fantastic which is really super cute it's just a clutch bag actually sling bag as well but what's really nice is that it comes in the bag to protect the actual end product. So when you receive it, it feels like it's more like gift wrapped, even though it's not necessarily gift wrapped. It kind of feels that way. So you want to be able to um, ship your products in a way that protects the product while it's shipping. And bear in mind that when you hand it over to the courier company or to the postal services, it may be thrown around in the truck. It may be thrown from one truck to the next or go on a conveyor belt and fall so you want to protect your product as much as possible so that the customer receives it on the other end kind of like in a nice and delicate way it makes it feel like you know it hasn't gone through the storm which it probably might have gone through um, in actually getting to the customer so I would recommend you using bubble wrap to paper I know paper is more environmentally friendly but it does weigh um, your product much much more it actually adds to your kilos which will add to your shipping expense and also to the expense that the customer will pay in the end and the bubble wrap kind of comes in these uh, rolls and you can buy it per meter or you can buy the whole roll of it and it's so light it protects your package but it's so lightweight so it's not actually going to be adding very much it's not going to be adding anything at all i mean it's basically air it's not going to be adding much to your actual overall weight of your product so i would recommend you investing in some bubble wrap and you're going to need to add all these costs up so whether you're using a box add the cost of the box, add the cost of your bubble wrap to each of those products because that is actually contributing to your final shipping cost. And it is business after all, this is a business, so you have to be watching your expenses and everything that you put in, you also have to, to add it up be cognizant of this fact so that, you know, you, you stay in business because it kind of gets exciting after a while. Like, you know, you're making sales, people are buying your product, but you actually may not be making that much money. You may not actually be making a profit if you don't watch all your expenses. So do document how much you spend, whether it's for your bubble wrap or your boxes, etc. In the early stages, don't worry too much. You are going to get it wrong once or twice. And sometimes you will win. Sometimes you may lose a couple of dollars, but it's all a learning curve but what I want to do with this video is to shorten your learning curve so that you get it right or as close to right as possible from the beginning right from the get-go don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you have liked it and don't forget to use the link that is in the description box below to um, get your 40 free listings on Etsy so I will see you on the next video